This video is going to talk about formulas and how to solve a formula for a variable and then how to work with them in word problems. So the first thing that you want to do is always clear your fractions and then you want to clear the parentheses and then you can apply those addition and multiplication properties. So you look at it and I want to solve for r. I have no fractions but I do have parentheses so I need to multiply everything by that p. I need to distribute the p. So on this side I have a and then p times 1 is p and then p times rt is just p r t. Well I want to solve for this r so I've got to make sure that I get this r on one side by itself and then if I have to take things away I can't. So I only have one r it's on one side so I'm ready to start doing the addition property. And the addition property tells me that I want to take this p and take it to the other side. Got to peel that layer of my onion. So we subtract p from both sides. Now remember a and p are different. It's like apples and pears. So I have to say a minus p is equal to prt. Well now I'm looking at this problem and I want to get to that r again but I've got this p and this t that are being multiplied by it and how do you get rid of something that's being multiplied by your variable? You divide it. So I need to divide this side by p t and I have to divide the whole other side by p t. And when you're working with fractions you can just divide the whole side. So the p's and the t's become factors of 1 and we're just left with r equal to a minus p on the top divided by p over t and I'm good with that answer. You don't have to take it any further than that. Let's try this formula. I'm trying to solve for c. I got a fraction so let's clear the fraction. Uh, you wouldn't necessarily have to clear the fraction because I just have a constant in that thing. But we were going to follow the rules so we're going to clear the fraction. So if I clear the fraction I need to multiply everything by that denominator of 5. So I have to multiply Let's look at it this way. I'm going to distribute the 5 to everything. I typically don't write it this way because I'll forget and it gets messy. I like to cancel things out. But we can rewrite this as 5 times f and then equal to 5 times 9 over 5 times c plus 5 times 32. If I write the 5 times everything then I won't forget. Okay this is still 5f equal to this 5 is a denominator and remember this is like over 1 so it's a numerator and so I have 9c left plus 5 times 32 and 5 times 32 is 160. Now again what are we solving for? We're solving for c. So I need to get rid of this 160. It's being added so to peel that layer off I'm going to subtract 160 and I can't combine it literally with my 5f so I just have to rewrite 5f and then subtract that 160 and then is equal to my 9c and I'm trying to go for c so I'm going to divide by 9 because it's being multiplied by 9 and my final answer is 5f minus 160 over 9 is equal to my c. So this example is the same kind of problem except that we have a y equal one half x minus eight. It doesn't really look like a formula but this is the kind of equation that we're going to be solving in the next chapter or two. So let's see what we could do for it. We want to solve it for x it says. So here's what we're trying to solve for and to do that then to, I need to peel this eight off so I'm going to add eight to both sides and remember I can't combine my y and my eight so I have y plus 8 on the left hand side and that's equal to 1 half x. Now we had a fraction here and last time we cleared the fraction but this time since I just had one term with a fraction in it and I figured I would have to clear it I could just work with it and see what happens. So I have this 1 half x it's being multiplied by x so that means I need to multiply both sides by 2 over 1 and that means both whole sides have to be multiplied by 2. So I have 2y plus 16 when I distribute my 2 and that's going to be equal to the 2 over 2 becomes a 1 and I just have 
x. So let's look at how we can translate and then use a formula. The area of a triangle with a base of 18 inches and a height of 7 inches, we're trying to find that area. Well, we need to know what the formula is. And the formula for area of a triangle is 1 half the base times the height. So let's see what we have. We want to find the area, so that's A. And the base, B, is 18 inches. So I have 1 half times 18 inches times the height, H, which is 7 inches. So 7 inches. And I need to figure out what that is. Well, we are talking about multiplication here. And so that means inch times inch when I'm thinking about my units. And remember, when you multiply the same thing over and over again, we can use an exponent. And the exponent tells me that I have two factors of inches. So inches squared is going to be our units. So now that we know what the units are going to be, we can really just rewrite this as 1 half times 18 times 7. So A is going to be equal to two things at a time. 1 half times 18 would be 9 times 7. And 9 times 7 is going to be 63. And from over here, we know that that's inches squared is the area. So when you're multiplying, your units will have an exponent on it. This one's a little trickier, let's, but let's read it. Find the length of a rectangle, that's what we're looking for, and we're going to call that L, of a rectangle if the perimeter, that should say, the perimeter here, we're going to call that P, is 64 inches, and the width, we're going to call that W, is 20 inches. Now why did I put all that in there? Because the formula is perimeter, distance around, is equal to 2 times the length plus 2 times the width. Now let's think about this for a minute. We're going to have our length in inches plus our width in inches. And if I add inches and inches, they're the same unit. Okay, I'm not multiplying this time, so I don't have factors. I'm just, it, this is almost like saying apples plus apples. I'm just totaling my inches. So if my unit is going to be inches. When you add and subtract, you keep the unit. If you multiply, you're going to have an exponent on your unit. So we have P is 64 is equal to 2 times the length, well length is what we're going to be solving for, plus 2 times the width, which happens to be 20. So there's our equation, and we have one variable, so that's nice. And if we keep going then, 64, expanding this out would be 2L plus 40. And now we know that we need to subtract the 40 to peel off the constant layer. And we have 24 is equal to 2L. And then if we divide that by 2, we're going to find out that the length is equal to 24, which means that in a sentence, the length is 24 inches.